Hi there, everybody. This is Chris Schmidt from Gray Scale Gorilla, and welcome to the Signal training. So, in this video, we're going to talk about using Signal and Expresso together. So, uh, a lot of the reason why we made the feedback tab the way that we did is that we figured people might want to drive things through Expresso. So maybe uh, maybe you create a null object, and then we create a signal tag. But what we can do through Signal is drive any number of parameters. We could maybe uh, create a... Um, what are we going to drive? doesn't really matter. I'm going to create just a blank user data. I'm going to hit add user data, and it's just a 0 to 100%. So that's whatever. It's a blank user data. I'm going to drag that in the Signal. So now it's driving a data, D for data. And then let's see. Let's have that output from 0 to 100 and have it animate. So zoop. Like that, it's changing, but there's nothing to see. So let's go ahead and say that this is driving a whole bunch of different objects. So let's say we have a cube, and we have a cone, and we have a sphere. So I'm going to move the sphere over, I'm going to move the cone over, and we're going to make this a low poly everything, so we can see so we can see the geometry a little better. So, yeah, there we go, drop that down, and drop the sphere down, and delete the falling tags. Sorry, I'm just trying to make it so we can see this a little better. Okay, so what we can do is create some Expresso. We can go into Cinema 4, or we can right-click, go to Cinema 4D Tags, Expresso, and now we can drag in whatever data we want from our signal tag. So I can grab our signal tag, and I can drag it in, and now it's called data because that's what we fed it. We can name this whatever we want. We can say uh, Expresso Tutorial. And that it'll be named that. So now there are, you know, if, I mean, I'm assuming you know some Expresso if you're watching this video, but there are so many, there is going to be a ton of settings and they're going to be created dynamically from Signal, depending on what you've been working on. So there might be a ton of settings potentially. So what is definitely very useful is driving things by, uh, or setting this up by dragging the parameter directly in. So for instance, let's have this output our final value. And our final value in our output tab is right here, final output. I can drag that directly into our tag, and there we go, final output. So now we could have this drive all three of these objects. So I can maybe go to Expresso, Calculate, and I'm going to create a range mapper. So I want this range mapper to output, the input will be that. And it's outputting from 0 to 1, which is from 0% to 100%. And let's, what do we want to output to? Let's say we want to output 2 degrees. So it's going to, from the course of 0 to 100%, it's going from 0 to 300 degrees. So I'm going to grab the cube, I'm going to drag it in, and that's going to output to the cube's, I think, rotation B. Well, I think I didn't want B necessarily, but that's fine. So now you see that this signal is driving this object via... Expresso. But now we could actually copy this range mapper and then bring in our cone and let's rotate our cone as well. And since I already rotated it incorrectly, let's do it again. Rotation B. And let's say we want this one to spin twice as fast. So now from 0 to 100%, it should spin from 0 to 720. So that should go twice as fast. We can look at our viewport and now you see that this is spinning two times for every one time the cube is spinning. So we get lots of really good controls there. And uh, we don't necessarily have to control directly out from just the base. For instance, we could go and also have this be driven by, I'm going to click on our signal tag, I'm going to go to our base tab and say add a random noise. So now there's this random noise on top of it. And you'll automatically see that this is starting to get all crazy wiggly because the noise has a 50% variation on top of what it was already doing. But if we go to our output tab, you'll see that... Um, then now we have a noise slider here, and we have a base slider. So we don't necessarily have to drive it from this final output. We could also drive directly from the noise. So this noise can be feeding into each of these. And now the noise is the only thing controlling these two. So this one's still going twice as far. But that means we can keep making more and more tabs and name them. So we can call this one uh, Rot B. So rotate the B rotation. And now we know that that is what's driving it. And then maybe we have our, let's make another noise. In fact, let's duplicate this one. And now that's duplicated. So we have two and it's called rot B2. And now in our output, we could grab rot B2 and drag that here and have that output 
to this range mapper. It's still going twice as far. But what that means is, actually, I want it to be identical. So I'm going to delete that range mapper, make a copy here. So now we have two different noises, which are currently identical, and they're each driving the rotation of these objects. But now we can go back to our single signal tag, and I can go to rot B, and then I can say, okay, that's great, but I want it to go twice as fast. And now that one's going to be individually controlled via signal. So it goes really fast. So Signal can become quite a useful rigging tool for different setups you do. Like, a, you could make a complex MoGraph rig and then drive all the parameters through a single Signal tag where you're creating all these different named tabs. And then you just grab the parameter you want driving it directly at a Signal. So, this, you know, I, this isn't something I necessarily, <clears throat> necessarily expect anybody to do, but there's po a lot of possibilities here for the way you're going to... Uh, that you can potentially control animations. Let's see, we could have this be a lot more extreme. So that's going to rotate even more. And let's say we have more bias, and that one's going super crazy. We have it go even faster. And meanwhile, our, our cube is just hanging out, being a cube, rotating slowly. You can have it go a little further with a little more bias, but he's still going relatively slow. Zoop, zoop, zoop. So, yeah. Um, it doesn't get much more complicated than that. So range mappers and outputting from our signal, signal tab or a signal node here from our signal tag. Uh, a lot of possibilities to do really cool things. So, uh, yeah, I hope you learned a bunch, and I'd love to see the stuff you guys make. Make sure you post it to Grayscale Gorilla somewhere, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye.